Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very special episode of CSK News. I hope you're all having a great weekend so far. Whether you're watching the PGL Major Qualifier or other esports out there, please make sure to leave a comment down below. Interact with me so I can interact with all of you guys who are still watching. And thank you all for watching this episode of CSK News. For our first big story today, though, I do want to touch on a blast to the past about currently one of the more expensive inventories in CSGO, which has been trade banned for over seven months. Kind of just came to light, though, a couple days ago. Thank you to Matt CS, as well as other people who actually brought this to my attention. I do appreciate that, especially to you, Fat man out there. These are the guys who actually brought this to my attention. Currently one of the more expensive inventories in CSGO history, valued at over $180,000, owned by this guy on screen. He goes by the name currently as Husky. So Husky, if you're out there watching this, we would love to know as a CSGO community how you possibly got trade banned with over $180,000 in your inventory. Unfortunately enough for this guy, he can only equip these skins on screen. He can no longer sell them or trade them and they are out of the game for most likely the rest of his lifetime, which is really unfortunate to think about. All the skins you guys could possibly buy if I gave you all $180,000, you can think of any knife out there. Think of whatever knife you can in CSGO right now. This guy probably has it. 43 pages of knives alongside that. Howls, Karambits, Dragon Lores, a, a whole mix of items valued at over $180,000 and currently one of the most expensive inventories in CSGO history. Even more expensive than MoTV who bragged about his inventory a couple days ago. This guy though is trade banned and those items are gone. So I want to take a blast back to the past. I've been talking about you know trade skins or actually skins that have been banned out of the game. I I talked about it last episode, so I thought I'd carry on with that, guys. One of the most expensive inventories you will ever see is trade ban, and it's so unfortunate and sad, but you wonder what he did to actually get trade ban. Now, bouncing off that, I do want to talk about more Optic changes. Now, many of you Optic fans out there know Optic has done very little over the past nine months. You have to go back to December of 2016, so late 2016, where they had back-to-back -back finals events back in late 2016, they were doing so well until they had the fall-off where their IGL Stannis Law, of course, went to Liquid, and ever since then, it's been a downfall of Optic. Now, they had tried out Hiko, they tried out Freakazoid, they had issues with, you know, Jason R and Hayes switching back and forth. Obviously, last week they lost Jason R, they've gone with their permanent fifth being their IGL as well, that's Hazed for that permanent fifth member for Optic, and they have now made another change, which all those changes, of course, have been short-term as well. So I don't expect, you know, just a warning for all of you, uh, CLG, I'm a pet fan, their former coach, I do not expect this change to be very, very long-term for him, but they have hired the former CLG coach who did leave just yesterday, that is, I'm a pet, he left CLG to join up with with Optic Gaming, that he's going to be their new coach and their new active member there. Although, as of right now, at the point of me recording this, they could have you know, won their first match, so they could be out of the PGL qualifier. As of right now, me recording this, Optic is 0-2 in the major qualifier. Still that downfall going slowly but surely, not working out for the team. They did lose their day one match to Penta as well as to Vega Squadron just yesterday. So right now, the PGL major qualifier not looking very hopeful for Optic. And I hate to be the guy to say it, but honestly, it can't get much worse for Optic. We have really high standards for a team like that who is honestly in the top three of North America but still have done so little and it's really hard to see right now the North American scene. You take away SK Gaming, take away Immortals and you look at the past seven to eight months, look at how little Cloud9, of course TSM losing their lineup as well, Optic and alongside Liquid, look at how little those three teams combined have done and they're all top three North America right now and it is really, really sad to say. Now bouncing off that, I do want to touch on Mixwell who had an interview with ECS and I want to give you guys those quotes on screen but Mixwell came out and he actually pretty much just said, I love Mixwell guys. He's so honest, so open with his fans and so genuine, but he actually came out and said something that maybe you shouldn't have said, but it's the untold truth of North America, the fact that North American pro players are paid way too much, harshly overpaid, especially for their performance-wise. When asked about this, he actually said that you take your top four North American teams and they're paid just as much as your top four European teams, but you don't got to win anything. You, they're paid so well and they don't have to win any tournaments, and he said this in quote-unquote with ECS himself, and again, I love that genuine personality. If you guys have ever seen Mixwell and Optic Nation videos, he seems like a great guy, but very open and honest in the fact that North American salaries are so harshly overpaid right now, and Jason R., formerly of Optic has said this before. He said this before in the, in the past, and actually in the, in the past few weeks. The fact is this, if CSGO wants to continue on this path and, and organizations want to actually make a profit, they're going to have to bring down those salaries to the fact that, you know, players actually have to win tournaments for them to be able to afford to pay them that much. Now, bouncing off that as well, even more bad news for North American orgs out there. Splice has actually dropped two of their members as well. It will actually be Rix and Aya. Sorry, I've mispronounced Aya's name all the time. Aya's been with Splice for over a year now, so kind of crazy to see that. Splice has now lost two members. You 
You can expect though, as they drop two members, Splice has made big changes in the past year or so as well. They probably have new prospective members coming in soon. So Splice has now lost two of their members, Ricks and Aya, and hopefully can be replacing them soon. So North American scene right now, leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about North America right now? I could talk about them all day long. Definitely a shadow in European in the European scene right now. North America not even making a dent. And in brighter news, if you guys saw this intro, I actually meant to shout this guy out a long time ago. You guys saw my brand new CSGO news intro. Thank you so much to Topics, my man, for doing that intro for me. His Twitter will be down below. So for any of you guys out there who need uh, you know any any kind of esports or any kind of YouTube intros out there, his Twitter is down below. Feel free to contact him for a great, really clean intro. And thank you to Topics for providing that for me. Also, to all of you guys out there, the OP Skins Army continues to freaking grow. We have now broke 500 users. Actually, I believe we're at 503 users right now. Thank you so much to all of you guys who've been using my OP Skins affiliate code. I seriously, I can't thank you guys enough. That is absolutely amazing to see. Now, bouncing off this though, even a cooler story. So many people out there are taking Counter-Strike to a new level, trying to test out Counter-Strike on new engines out there, new kind of models for all you, all you engineers out there. We actually had something leaked on the Reddit forums about a week ago, actually. It's called Counter-Strike Remastered. Just like Counter-Strike Classic Offensive, I know the, the owners and the mods over there who are trying to make Counter-Strike Classic Offensive. You guys have heard about that. Their uh, their Steam page is almost 50,000 users, so it's kind of crazy to see. All of you guys love Counter-Strike so much, you want to play it in different modes. Counter-Strike Remastered, though, kind of like Counter-Strike Classic Offensive, but on a new engine, so I'll actually link this video down below. I've been playing the trailer on screen for all of you guys. The owner of this actually called it a hobby project. He's doing this for fun. He's working a job or going to school or whatever it is, and he's making Counter-Strike Remastered as a hobby on a new source engine, so it's going to be cool to see how it works, and if you guys like that gameplay, I'll link the full video down below for all of you. It's a short one minute, 15 second trailer. But yeah, Counter-Strike Remastered, Counter-Strike Classic Offensive, all these different games are bouncing off Counter-Strike, and I love to see this kind of involvement because this is what keeps the community thriving. This is what keeps us so involved and actually loving each other. So great job to the owner of this. If you want to reach out to me, I would love to share your story more. And I will be touching on this more in the future and actually giving you guys more details, but for the upcoming major, many of you know about, we have the PGL major in Krakow, Poland coming up on July 16th, so not too long from now, actually just a little over two weeks from now, and I will be, based on the thumbnail, you guys probably saw that, I will be investing $1,000 of my own money. I've been saving up on my Steam wallet for quite some time. I'll show you guys a screenshot. I finally reached exactly $1,000 on my Steam wallet, and I will be investing every single cent of that into the next major. I'll be making a video dedicated to that. It's going to be called, obviously, investing $1,000 into a CSGO major to see how much profit I can make off of stickers, sticker capsules, uh, weapon skins, cobblestone packages. It's going to be really cool to see what I can actually do, and I'm going to try and predict the market based around a major. There's so much money around a CSGO major, and there's so many things you can actually make money on that a lot of you guys probably do and don't know about. So that's going to be a great series, probably a one or two part video, but I want to explain to you guys I will be investing a large amount of money into the CSGO major. So if you guys have any ideas of how I can spend that money, please comment down below. But now on to our last story. It's just, I'm really surprised right now, but hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, and very important, for all of you guys who are still watching right now, please listen. I will be repeating this story on Sunday's episode. I have some amazing stories, some really funny and also crazy stories for Sunday's episode. So tomorrow's episode, I will be repeating this, this actual story as well because I seriously think Phantom Lord might be coming back to CSGO. As insane as it sounds, he just recently changed his profile picture on Facebook back to this. If you currently go to his Twitter, he deleted all of his tweets, but one, I think Phantom Lord is actually stupid enough to, um, I think he actually is, I have to go. Okay, live, love, laugh a lot. I will see you guys all tomorrow with a crazy episode. Leave a comment down below. I love you guys. I don't love you. That was weird. <laughs> okay. Goodbye.